Hi everyone, I'm Tiwa and like I have told you before, this year is going to be exciting because we are going to build our very own gravel bikes. But for this very first gravel bike that we're going to build, we have also set ourselves a little challenge, something that is special. And that is, we want to see if we can repurpose a old mountain bike into a gravel bike. Okay, so this is going to be a two-part series. In the first part, I am going to show you and explain to you in detail what are the different components that I sourced and why did I choose them. And in the second video, I'll proceed to build the bike. Okay, so today I've got about all the components here and I'm going to go through with you one by one. Let's see. Okay, let me tell you a little bit more about the story behind when we are choosing this frame. Now, uh, when we first thought of finding a mountain bike frame to repurpose it into a gravel bike, we were actually looking for some vintage and well-known brands in the second-hand market, uh, such as GT or Diamondback. You know, however, those brands are a little bit out of our budget. Thankfully, this one turned out and Berita is still a very reliable brand and very popular brand and this brand happens to be a XC Cross Country series which is very suitable for our purpose of turning into a gravel bike okay so and most importantly it is a disc brake frame so it actually takes many of the things on our list they still look very trendy even though it's a 2009 models. Well, another thing about this free set is that it fits 27.5 wheel sets which is also equivalent to 650 in wheel set. Well, I think I've gotten a really good deal on this bike frame but there are no major scratches or damages to the paint except for some personalized stickers from the previous owners and of course some dirt. Well, uh, I can easily remove those stickers and dirt and well, it will still be a very good frame. So next is the group set. And for group set, when we are sorting out for it, we realized that the gravel bike group sets from major brands such as Shimano and Strength can be quite costly. And so to keep the budget low, we really have to look elsewhere. And the closest subsidy will be the Unroot series. But for group series, we reckon that they may not be the most suitable for gravel use. And an entry level group bike group sets, just the shifter and the derailleur for Shimano Claris can cost $200. And for Sora, it can cost about $300. But thankfully, there are other options in the market available, such as Sensa and L Cool. Now, for Sensa, I have actually used their Sensa and Bio Pro on my little bike, and I am quite satisfied with it. But for L2, I haven't got a chance to really test it out and I'm really interested. This turned out to be a very good opportunity for me to test it. I'm really interested to test their highest and which is their hydraulic uh, group set. But well, there's no harm for me to first try their entry range, which is this. This is the L2 GR7 1x10 gravel group set. So at first look, this really looks pretty decent. I mean, the finishing are also very nice and the grips are quite comfortable. And most importantly, I got this whole set for a very good price. I've got the shifters, the 1x10 shifters, as well as this rear derailleur, the 10 speed rear derailleur. At 1146 cassette, as well as a 10 speed chain from Z Race. All this for $145 in PC pop shipping. Now just to give you an idea of how cheap this is, a gravel specific group set from Shimano such as the GRX 400, which is also 10 speed and cost close to $1,000. But, well, we, we don't have that budget, but even if we have that budget, we reckon that it won't be a good match for the project that we are seeing today. So this could just turn out to be the right hand result. Well, of course, I have to put it on and give you a review afterwards. Now this is a closer look at the L2 GR7 rear derailleur. This is really good quality in the sense that look at this full alloy body. And look at these pulley wheels. They come with very deep teeth. Now this will really keep the chain in position even on the bumpy gravel terrain. So overall I'm really impressed at this 
GR7 shifters and derailleur. As for the crankset, we have quad hip from Z Race, and here is the crankset. It's a hollow tech crankset, and not only that, hey, this is a direct mount chain ring, so we can just directly fit this onto me. The crankset without can use of any chain ring bolts. This is 38T, so we will, we will actually deciding between 38T and 42T with our two really popular options for Rebel Light. So with this combination of 38T chain ring and 11T asset core, you can go and about 40 km per hour at about 100 RBN. And uh, if you're using the 42T chain rings, you can increase it to about 43 km per hour at the same RPM. Whilst we're just thinking that the increment in speed isn't that significant. And after all, when we're going on gravel array, I mean, speed may not be entirely of such a high priority to us. The primary main reason is that a 42 key set cost above the price. <laughs> so the price of this set that we got here is $67.50 inclusive of shipping. But a four, uh, uh, the same set with a 42 T chain ring cost double the price like almost $120. Now I'm really happy with this set actually because it looks really cool and it looks sturdy. Well, the frame that we bought does not come with a fork. So we have to source one for it. So we needed a rigid fork and we decided that to use a carbon fiber fork because it is very inexpensive to get one and there are a lot of options in the market nowadays. Tusik is one of them and I've chosen this because I've used this model before and uh, it, it served me very well so I'm using the same model for this bike. Now if you're considering to do the same kind of project or if you're buying fork for your bike, there are just a few things to take note and number one, yeah, whether your frame is a taper frame, which means the headset is uh, small on top and big at the bottom, or it's a straight fork like this, where both the headset on top and the headset by the bottom is the same size. So for us, our frame needs a straight fork, so I've gotten this. And uh, the next thing to take note is about the brake system, how the brakes are being monitored. So this is for a disc brake. Lastly, most important also for us when we're considering building this gravel bike is the tire clearance because we have in mind to use wider tire and this block just gives me the tire clearance that I needed for this project. So the price of this block is actually $115. Now we've got an aluminium alloy flare handlebar from Uno here. Uh, Uno is a brand that I have used a lot of times and, and I really like it because as for an aluminium alloy handlebar, they are actually pretty light in weight and very durable. And this is a 40 cm size. Yep, so I'm gonna expect a lot of comfort and control with this handlebar because I've never tried a flat handlebar before. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. And this only costs $30. And for Sipos, it is Uno Advanced Project. So nothing fanciful, nothing special, but just a good old reliable simples and it costs 20 Singapore dollars. Now next is the brakes. Now so we have tried a cable disc brake as well as hydronic disc brake because we have not tried the one in between which is a cable actuated hydronic disc brake. So we decided to give it a try and to see how the performance really fair. And we have found the ideal choice in this Room HK100. Uh, it fits the mounting on the frame and most importantly, uh, the budget is really draining. We got this set for $46 including shipping and tax. But, but it doesn't come with the disc workflow. Uh, we bought this separately. We have gotten the disc workflow from Addict and this costs $15 each. As to why we chose 160 mm pen size for the roto, we thought that 140 mm might not be sufficient, or might not be enough for the type of drag rate that we're going to do on this gravel bike. And, and, but 160, we are quite confident that it can do the job. As for the wheel set, I've got the Helix wheel set with the fast case parts. Now for this wheel set, there's an interesting story behind. I was doing housekeeping, uh, checking out my inventory, clearing it out, and I realized that I actually got this wheel set lying there for a long time. I didn't even know that I still have this. In the market right now, there are so many, many aluminium wheel sets that are better than this. 
by Boeing at cheaper price. For example, Cruiser Wheelset now goes for about $230, $250. You can get actually better wheel hubs than this. Yeah, so, well, instead of letting this go to a waste, I'm going to put it here onto this project. But just for the purpose of tracking our total cost of building this part, we are going to pack this wheel set to that of a Quinzer wheel set that we can get in the market right now and about $230. So most important thing about this wheel set it is that it is tubeless ready because we intend to use tubeless tire for this rebel bike. Right, so as I said, we wanted to use tubeless tires and our choice would definitely be Continental Race Cake. This is the equivalent to the Boot Series Ultra Sport Series, which is cheap, good, and durable. So we found all those identity all in this Race King. Now this knobby trap pattern provides very good and firm grid, even on cornering as well as on loose surfaces. Most importantly, this is size 2.0. It's a 27.5 times 2.0 tire which is equivalent to a 50 mm higher width. Well, we have heard a lot of reviews, a lot of other people who are using gravel bike and regretting that they didn't go to the maximum tire size. So here we have gotten the maximum tire size that our bike can support. Now it does make me wonder, will we be the one who convinced that, oh, my tire is too wide, I should be going narrower. So for all the performance that we're getting out of this tire, it only costs $45 a piece. Okay, we've got the Uno stamp here as well, and this is a 70mm stamp. Right now, I'm not sure what is the most suitable stamp neck for me on this gravel bike. The ray itself is meant for lighter about 180cm and above. I'm only 172 so I chose a relatively shorter stem leg at 70 mm. And stems like this, it is really cheap. This costs about 15 to 20 dollars. For the saddle, I'll be using the EC90 Pro 143 model. EC90 is a Chinese brand, and they have a wide range of saddles for you to choose from. And this is just uh, one of those that Brian bought and doesn't like. So I just randomly take one for his stash of saddles. And the cost of this saddle is about $30. And lastly, matching water bottle cage. This only costs $3 a piece. Alright, so as you can see, I've got almost all the components ready here. Except for paddle as well as the bar tips. You will see it on the next part of this video when I big it. So as of now, the total cost of all these components I think it totals up to about $868 if I'm not wrong, but I'll do the video calculation and post it there. Well, definitely we can go cheaper if we really want to, like an easy go to $700 and below if we were to choose a normal wheel set or a second hand wheel set and to go with tube tires instead of tubeless tires. But we reckon that the, the, the wheel sets are really important. They are the primary contact points with the ground. So, uh, but that is the area that we don't really want to compromise too much, even though we want to keep the budget low. Okay, so please stay tuned to part two. If you haven't subscribed, do remember to subscribe. And I'm really looking forward to building this. I hope you're as excited as I am. Okay, so, alright, I'll see you next episode. Bye bye.